Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining um, and thanks for waiting for a few minutes there. We just had a few more people joining in, so I kind of want to leave it open um, for that to happen. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Julian. I'm the Plant Success Manager here at PuildExact. Um, we've got Kurt, who's also on the line as well. Um, so the reason for, for, these, uh, for these webinars, we've already done one last week. We've got one today and then we've got another follow-up one coming up um, next week and then a couple of uh, PuildExact training ones um, thrown in there as well. Um, the reason for this, you know, at, at the current moment and even before all this uh, coronavirus stuff happened and, and sort of changed how everyone works, um, really competitive market in the in the building construction space at the moment. Um, you know, prices are getting driven down and, you know, people are finding it a little bit harder to win work. So the idea for this is really to, to show you how you can win more work in that competitive uh, marketplace. Um, Kurt's worked with builders um, for a long time now, so he's going to give some really good advice on that. Um, then we're going to throw back to me. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a run through on the build exact in terms of how we can help you um, win more work. And then we're going to throw back to Q&A section at the end. So there will definitely be time for um, some Q&As. During the presentation, Kurt will ask you to, you know, put some few comments and things down as well. Um, but there will be time for, for questions and everything at the end. And we will be recording this as well. So if you miss any notes or you're on the move and you're listening to it, don't worry, we will be getting this recorded for you as well. So um, I think Kurt's got his camera on now. So hopefully you can both, uh, hopefully you can see us both and hear us perfectly fine. Um, if the, Kurt, you can hear me there. I can. Can you hear me? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly. So um, as I said, I'm going to throw over to Kurt now, um, and he's going to speak for a little while, and then it'll be back to me um, doing a bit about Build Exact. I'll show you a bit about the product as well, so you can get a good understanding of it. I'm not going to bore you for full product demo, and um, you can definitely do that one on one with one of our guys, um, and I'll throw back to Kurt as well. So. I'll just uh, stop showing my screen and then Kurt will throw his up and do an uh, introduction from, from his side as well. So I'll just stop now. There we go. Kurt, you should be good to share now. Perfect. Thanks for that, Julian. So no I wanted to, uh, excellent. I'll um, start by thanking all of you guys for attending today. I understand how valuable your time is, especially in this uh, environment. So thanks for making yourself available. I want to make sure that you guys get as much value as possible out of the session. I also want to thank Build Exact, uh, Julian and Marina for hosting this, this webinar. I'm very excited to you know, share with you guys what I'm hearing from the trenches. So I speak to between 30 and 50 builders a week. I've been coaching builders since 2004. And um, I just want to share what guys are doing to win work now. But before I do that, I do want to find out what's going on for you guys. Because in order for me to deliver value, I really need to, and, and that's my focus, right? I've got a limited period of time together. I want to deliver as much value to you guys as possible, make this um, good use of your time. And the way for me to do that is to make sure that what I talk about is relevant to you. So um, I know that you obviously you have guys from all over the country, um, you'd be experiencing different market conditions and have uh, you know, a different impact based on the this, this situation that we're in. So, if you guys could chat in the chat box, if you could just type in what your biggest challenge is right now. If you could just type that in, you should see a chat box there. I'd love to get a feel for exactly what your specific challenge is. And then hopefully I can, again, make it as relevant as possible. If you could please, if you haven't already done so, make sure you uh, eliminate all distractions, put your email away, uh, switch your phone off or put it on silent. Uh, if, you, if you're in an office environment or at home, whatever you are, just let people know that you, you don't want to be distracted. We'll try and minimize. So I'm getting some things coming through you. Hey, Lauren, good to see you on the call. Um, let's have a look. Getting people to commit to starting work. Okay, yes, definitely an issue that I'm seeing as well. Um, getting clients, clients putting brakes on new projects about to start. Yep. So hopefully... Yeah, this is going to be good for you guys to hear what's happening from other builders. I know from my experience, builders don't often get together and share what's going on. And when they do, uh, because you know entrepreneurship and being in business is often very um, lonely, a lonely experience. It makes you feel like you know you're not the only one going through these issues. Uh, Brad, current workload is fine. Um, we all had work leading into this. My concern is six to twelve months. Um, okay, due to people putting project projects on hold at the moment. Yep. We have Kane, unknown about property prices changing, value point for clients. Yep. Clients getting cold feet. All right. That was from Joe. Uh, Robert, would be proposal process bringing in leads. Okay. Bringing in leads. Yes. Cash flow banks, home warranty insurance, promoting more and more builders coming into the marketplace. 
All right. More and more builders coming into the marketplace. Okay, interesting one there. Um, getting clients to commit in current market, closing more customers, a smaller number of inquiries. Clients asking for pricing without full drawings and engineering. Clients not able to commit. So that looks like a big one, guys. Not able to commit now. People sitting on their hands waiting. Okay, so I'll give you my take. Again, I'm speaking to a lot of guys all over the country. And I'll tell you I'm here in a second. I'm just going to go through a few more of these. There's a lot of people on the call. I can't go through all your messages, but I really appreciate you guys that are participating. As Julian said, we'll have a Q&A at the end. So write any questions down that are urgent for you. Um, but if it's, as I'm speaking, if it's, if it's highly relevant and you want to ask a question during the presentation, I'm happy to, uh, to answer. And Julian's going to be checking through these as well. So look, guys, from what I'm seeing here, it looks like um, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's the front end of the business. It's the sales, the marketing, people not wanting to commit now and also generating more leads. So I can tell you from my take, you definitely, that, that's what I'm hearing as well, okay? From my um, experience speaking to the builders that I do each week, um, they are, you have to work twice as hard, basically, to get the same result with the, the number of inquiries and then also the conversion rates as well. The worst thing you can do in this environment is nothing. So um, the big challenge is obviously staying motivated, working twice as hard to get um, you know, little or no return However, if you do, there could be huge benefits down the track. So we'll talk about that. I'm going to focus heavily on the front end today. So your sales and marketing, specifically what you can do to work now and also get people to commit that are sitting on their hands because there are some real incentives for people to do exactly that. So let's dive in. A lot of builders are experiencing this, you know, uncertainty. I've been doing a lot of these webinars. So not only speaking to a lot of builders one-on-one, -on -one, but also doing webinars like this and getting feedback. And it's all very similar to what you guys are talking um, talking about in the chat box. So winning work now is a big challenge. Um, some guys do have work on, like some of you have mentioned, and the concern is going off a cliff. I know that um, some of the suppliers and some of the project home builders are talking about September, where potentially people are going to go off a cliff because there is work on now, but it's drying up. And then there's going to be big issues then. Um, for, for some of you that do bigger projects, 12, 18 month builds, maybe you're not so worried. You, you, you're lucky you're going to sail through. And I'm working with some builders, some private clients that are in that position. But you're still concerned about workflow down the track. All right. So really, there's some things you can do there. There's, there's some big opportunities. It's counterintuitive in this market, but there are some big opportunities and things that you can do to capitalize on current market conditions. And we do have a webinar coming up next week, Friday, the 8th of May. We're going to be talking specifically about what you can do to build your systems and processes so that you can capitalize on the upswing that will eventually come. And that will come. Eventually, all these people that are sitting on their hands and waiting are going to come forward. There's going to be that herd mentality, a big rush. There's going to be a bottleneck. And there's going to be big opportunities for, for you guys to grow. And if you can set yourself up for that, It'll be potentially, you know, 12, 18 months, you look back and this will be the best thing that ever happened to your business. For those of you that don't know me, just a quick two minutes. I'm a business coach. I work exclusively with builders. I'm a unit of 2004, work with over a thousand builders one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my claim to fame is my, my second book that was released in 2018. I was lucky enough for it to become a, an international bestseller. The Homeowners Association of America reviewed the book last year and it was on display at the International Builders Show in January this year in Las Vegas. So I'm not telling you that to impress you. I just want to let you know that, um, you know, that book in particular, The Million Dollar Builder, I put my heart and soul into it. And there are about 40 documents and videos in the book that people can access through um, a URL. And I'm going to make this book available to you guys, the audio version, that is, for free for attending this, uh, attending this webinar. So that'll be made available to you guys. Let's get a quick snapshot, though, guys, on your business. Again, this is all about relevance to you. So these are 10 areas that are relevant to your business, regardless of whether you're a sole trader or you've got 50 carpenters working for you. And if, you know, hopefully you've come into this COVID situation with some systems and processes. You know, the success in business is all about processes and people. And hopefully you've had some of those. You've got a bit of a game plan. If you haven't, obviously, you know, it's going to be a lot tougher for you. And you'll notice competitors out there. Maybe you've got some structure and process and some decent people and, and some of your competitors aren't. And, Obviously, there's going to be a cleansing process. Some builders are going to go away. You know, others are going to be dropping their pants for work. And you guys need to have a strategy to deal with that. So you can see strategy. As I go through these, I want to rapid fire through them because we don't have a lot of time. I want you to think about 
you know, where you sit in each of these areas. So give yourself a score from naught to 10. So zero or naught being completely abysmal, uh, pathetic, you can't imagine it getting any worse, and then 10 is perfection. So somewhere between one and nine for each of these. So strategy is, is overriding strategy. Your market positioning, how you position yourself in the market, which is one of the most important things you can do in business. What I mean by that is, do you have a niche? Do you have an area specifically? It could just be renovations and extensions, which is really staple, probably the most staple niche you could be in. Maybe it's luxury homes, custom homes, sloping blocks, difficult access sites, heritage, eco, all those different, there's a different genre of home, uh, like Hampton Homes is very popular. So do you have one? Do you, do you, do you have a specific market that you're targeting? Um, if you don't, I'd highly recommend that you do that. Your marketing is all about your online and offline marketing strategies. And we're talking about that today, some of the specific marketing strategies that I'm seeing out there. By the way, guys, I'm only gonna share what I know to be working, all right? I'm an empiricist, so I work on empirical evidence with marketing, it's, it's absolutely crucial to test and measure, and we'll talk more about that later. But uh, to give yourself a score for your marketing, so firstly, do you have an area of specialty? Secondly, do you have integrated online and offline marketing? So website, uh, Instagram page, Facebook, house, site signs, banners, huge signage, all that sort of thing. Singing off the same hymn sheet, and is it tested and measured? Do you know which channels are generating your best quality inquiries? And do you have consistent quality inquiries coming through um, all the time? If not, you've got a lot to do there. By the way, if you're giving yourself a low score, because I know marketing for a lot of builders is something they don't do well. And the reason for that is, is the mindset. So I might touch on that now. Every one of these areas has a, a mindset associated with it. In the same way that your business will never exceed your leadership, you guys may have heard of that before. Hopefully you're doing some leadership development. Your marketing will never exceed, your marketing results will never exceed your marketing mindset. In the same way as your, your money, uh, the money that you make, your financial results will never exceed your money mindset. So you may know some people where $100,000 a year income is a lot of money. You know, someone on 40 or 50 grand a year, that's huge for them. Uh, for most of us, that's nothing. Like, that's not a lot of money. A million bucks, the reason I called my book million dollar builders we have you know a few dozen guys netting a million dollars seven figures after wages to themselves and after expenses and for some of you that's like insane amount of money but for others it's not you know we have guys doing multiple seven figures and when i went and saw mr pena dan pena i don't know if you guys are familiar with him over in scotland last year i mean 10 million is nothing for him so the, your mindset is is crucial in all of these areas i just want to point that out because you'll never outperform whatever your mindset is so marketing strategies, capital, are you building up working capital? Ideally, you should have at least 2% of turnover in a separate cash account somewhere and constantly building it up. In fact, the ideal scenario and the thing that I strive for, the outcome objective I strive for with all my builders is that you have a business that's got good process, good people, it's profitable, there's good cash flow. You can see in the middle of this wheel, the two words profit and cash flow, those two words pretty much sum up your business, right? You're either making a net profit after all expenses and wages are you're not, and your money's either coming in before it goes out or it's not. Now, ideally, you should have, and I can tell you now, 90% of builders don't make a net profit. They may earn a wage. Most guys don't cost themselves into a job if they're doing supervision or project management. And they're living on, they're living on the profit, not the wage. And most accountants and bookkeepers don't know how to set up financials correctly as well. I'm going to touch on that briefly, where they'll show 150 grand profit on your profit and loss. I'm always looking at P&Ls early on when I, when I coach guys. And uh, when I ask where's their wages, it's not in there. They're living on that 150, so their property is zero. Okay, so when I say profit, I'm talking net profit after all expenses. But really, you want to be generating enough income so that you've got some money that's allocated to your, your people and your leadership development. You want to always be training. Most guys aren't training. In fact, right now is a really good time. Some of you got the JobKeeper program happening. We've got guys that are training their team. They, 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 there's sort of semi downtime. And you can train them on software programs or your apprentices on, on better um, you know, building practices, whatever it is. So you want to have, but again, ideally an allocation for that always, an allocation for marketing spend always, an allocation for building up cash reserves and capital always, a percentage going in there, and then your net profit. Okay, and if you can do that, you'll, you'll go into what's called the blue ocean situation. You'll eventually sail out because you'll keep improving your business, your systems and your people always and your marketing. You'll eventually be in a position where it's negotiated attendance, right? And you break away from the herd and the competition and all this pricing. The most common thing I hear from builders are other guys cheaper. And if you've got an issue where you're losing, uh, you're in the race to the bottom is what we call it. And you're losing jobs on price 
then you've got a marketing problem. You're not working hard enough and building value. If you go to BMW and Mercedes, you don't look at a Mercedes and a Toyota and go, I can't see the difference. That one's, the Toyota's cheaper, I'll just take that. You don't, you can see value. And there's a reason why a lot of people buy or opt for something like a Mercedes. And then there's a Maserati, there's a Ferrari, there's other levels of value. But that is on you. That's the leadership thing. You've got to make the decision to one, decide what your specialty is. And that's why you need a specialty in order to better build value. But then you need to be looking at how can you better build value, all right? No one can really do that for you. However, success leads clues. You can see examples of guys that are doing it all over the country and the world. Sales, we're gonna talk about sales today. You need a system for sales. I'm a, you know, my single-minded focus with what I do is getting every builder in Australia and eventually the world to charge for quotes. Most guys don't charge for quotes. If any of you do, congratulations. I'm gonna show you how to do it today. And unfortunately, most of you are not gonna follow through on it. Why? Because if it's a mindset thing, it's so easy to do, but it's you know, the number one thing you, most of you need to do, and this is myself included, I'm not having to go at you guys, you gotta get out of your own way. The re only reason you're not achieving the successful results you want is because of you. All right? It's one of the most powerful things that I've learned in my coaching career so far. Job delivery, on time, to budget, and uh, to standard. Is that happening consistently in your business? Again, give yourself a score for these guys, not to 10. Admin, what does that look like? Is it an absolute mess? Or do you have good systems? Cloud-based systems, which, you know, these days, guys, there's better sharing of information, systems, and technology than there's ever been. There's never been a better time to be in business. There's a lot of things you can do. And again, there's things you can do now to capitalize. The, the mindset thing is the biggest challenge. It's staying motivated and doing, you know, putting in twice the amount of effort consistently. Consistency is key now for little return um, to get to reap massive benefit down the, down the track. And the benefit would be market share. Because remember, builders are going away. People are sitting on their hands. Less people are marketing. If you start marketing and putting good systems in place now, you're going to reach more people and you're going to um, achieve a bigger market share. All right. So that's the, that's the big opportunity. Finance, well, you're either making a profit or you're not. Your cash flow is either positive or, or it's not. And then there's financial controls. Do you know your break-even point? Individual job reports. Uh, using a cash flow forecast, a 12-week cash flow forecast, that sort of thing. Revenue projections. Um, if I'm speaking fast, guys, I want to I want to get into the, the, the meat and potatoes, all right, as quickly as possible because I've, I've got plenty to share and we do have limited time. Uh, systems. So this systems relates to every area, all right? So really... You know, at the end of the day, you take your business, uh, take you out of your business, what's left? You know, if there's nothing left, you've got no systems. The, the optimum system thing is, well, you look at franchises, there's plenty of building franchises. I had a guy asked me yesterday, can you even sell a, a building business? Well, I said, well, look at all the, the franchise businesses. That's what they sell. They sell the systems rather than the brand. And if you've got no business experience, I'd highly recommend you buy a franchise. It's not a bad option. Um, otherwise, you want to build your own and then you can set your business up for succession. You can have a forever business. That's the big thing these days most guys aren't aware of because of the efficiency and the, and the level of, of systems and technology, you can really have a business that goes on indefinitely. You can hand it to someone else, if not your kids. Uh, there's your team. Uh, you, you, you get the people you deserve, right? If you haven't got good people, you gotta look at yourself. It's all about standards. What standards do you set and what values do you set? I work with one of my clients in Adelaide. They've reached a point now where their business has such a strong reputation. Their standards are so consistently high that people want to work for them because of who they are. So they've got a son that works in their office as an office admin person. He's a qualified physiotherapist. She left her career as a physio, very intelligent girl, to work with them. Right? So Virgin used to be like that. I don't know if they're going to, not, not anymore, but uh, you know, they've got that reputation where people want to work with them. Facebook, Google, there's, there's companies out there where if you've got that on your CV as an employee, it actually works in your favor. Um, leadership, again, you should be working on yourself. Your business will never exceed your leadership. It's a good example of this, guys, to understand how mindset impacts results is I don't know if you heard about the lotto winners, 75% of lotto winners, including people that win 150 mil or more, apparently five years after they win the money, they're back where they started, right? And that's, why do you think that is? It's because they weren't, they didn't have the mindset or capability to manage the money. And you probably know some people, if you gave them 10 million today, it'll be gone very quickly, right? So in business, you really need to become the type of leader worthy of success. So hopefully you got a bit of snapshot in your business. Um, let's keep moving. All right, goal setting. When it comes to leadership, obviously paramount, right? It's part, leadership's all about decision-making and you need to set goals. Sounds very cliche, but I'll give you a great analogy. This, this dartboard analogy, something that I heard recently. If I said to you, um, I, let's play darts for money, right? Whoever hits a bullseye, you know, we each throw. If someone hits a bullseye, the other guy doesn't. That's a thousand bucks to throw, all right? Now, if I told you I'm a champion um, dart player and I hit a bullseye every second throw, right? 
um, let's play. But here's the thing, here's the rules. You're gonna be blindfolded and you're playing with your non-dominant hand. I'm not. Would you, want to, would you want to play? You wouldn't, right? That's just nuts. That's what you're up against though when you're competing against another builder and then you know some guys in your area where they have, they know exactly what they want. They've got a good niche, they've got education-based marketing, they've got good systems and processes. Anyone that you know or know of is very successful in business or anything in life, they, they have made some dis decisions. It's usually in line with, with things that they're very passionate about, they've got good purpose, and you know you, you it's no contest if you out there you're a me too builder and you're trying to compete against those guys you can't and those are the guys that get out into a blue ocean and yes it takes time and it takes effort but um if you can just stay the course then you can get there so one of the things one of the principles that every successful person in business follows and i follow this to my clients is the 80 20 rule you guys may have heard of the pareto principle Essentially what it says is 80% of your results come from 20% of your activities or 20% of your systems. Okay, so it allows you to prioritize because the reality is there's more to learn, there's more to do in business than you have hours in a day or weeks in a year. So the only way you can get on top of things and be more proactive than reactive, I'm assuming some of you are more reactive than proactive with, with your business. And to get, the way you get over that line is to prioritize. So you've got to know what the 20% of things are. And that's how I get to help guys. That's how I can get results quickly uh, with builders. In less than three years, you can really fully systemize your business so you can be franchise ready or ready to replicate what you do in different areas and license it out if you wanted to. Now, if you extrapolate this idea further, this Pareto principle, what you get is a, so when I say extrapolate it further, that 20%, 20% of systems and things you do, activities, you and your team give you 80% of your results. Also, the 80% of your problems come from 20% of your clients. 80% of your, your team related issues from 20% of your team or your trade base. 80% of your profit, 20% of your jobs, roughly, okay? The 20%, if you look at that 20% and we, we break it down so that we look at the 20% of that 20%, you get what's called a, a 464, where 4% of the things you do give you 64% of your results. Results being profit, workflow, cash flow. Those are the three main outcomes we're striving for for success in business, right? So we, I'll call those game changers. So I want to go through some of those with you today and obviously point to and focus on the winning work now because some of you are obviously in a position where, where cash flow is a, is a major priority and you just want to pull out all the stops and, and hopefully we can look at some intelligent solutions for you. Before we jump into that, though, I need to mention financial systems and controls. Your financials are the Business 101 foundation systems that you absolutely need to have in place before you aggressively pursue any marketing or sales. Now, if, you, if you're desperate for cash flow and you need, put, you, know, you need to sign work immediately to put food on the table, then there's no use uh, working on your, on your financial systems. But the reality is you shouldn't be working on your financial systems anyway. One of the most powerful things of learning business is not how, but who. That's the question you ask. Not how do I fix my financial systems if they're not set up correctly, but who can best help me? And that's part of what I do is we have what's called like a genius network. We have one of the best builders, um, bookkeepers in the country. He's got 150 builders on his books. If you're going to use a bookkeeper, don't find someone that knows a financial system but works with retail stores and uh, restaurants or whatever else. You've got to find someone that understands building because it is very different. How you set up your job codes, your cost codes, you get accurate individual job reports is absolutely crucial. But the question is, my question for you is, how do your financial systems, your financial position make you feel? You know, I know for a lot of guys, you mentioned cash flow, profit, ATO, tax, BAS. It creates anxiety and fear. It literally brings up an anxiety and fear. Maybe feel that now when I, when I start talking about this stuff. But really what you should feel is absolute excitement. Because I can't tell you when you... Now, at the end of the day, what I do is I help give builders certainty. When you have a, a good understanding of your financial controls, you know how to make money, you know how to generate profit and cash flow. There's very few things I always maintain now, outside of having kids, there's, there's few things more exciting than, than having a business that works and that makes money. And again, money is just a means to an end. It's not all about the money. It's about using the money to give you other things you want. So I highly recommend you find someone. Um, I'm happy to refer you if, you. if you've got any questions, you'll have my details after this. Um, 
it doesn't really matter what system you use, whether it's QuickBooks, Xero, MyOb, uh, whatever account of software. Again, it's more important that it's set up correctly and making sure that you've got those job codes and cost codes. Um, going paperless in this day and age is a very good idea using cloud-based solutions. Here's a photo of one of our guys in Perth. We actually had a one-day workshop once about how to take your business paperless. And you, you can now, I can confirm, take your entire business paperless. And obviously that, that brings a certain level of efficiency and further profitability. It means you can do a, a bigger volume of work uh, with the same resources, with the same people and, and systems, which again is going to add to your bottom line. So this was the before picture. Um, Cam went back to his office. One of the, the specialists that we had on the panel at the one day workshop actually was from Perth. Cam cornered the guy and you can see the paper is gone afterwards. So let's jump into sales, guys. Sales is uh, a big area, and I can't start talking about sales without touching on the mindset thing, all right? I need to just check in. Um, someone was saying that, yeah, and they're saying very anxious. Yeah, sorry to hear that, man. I'm sure there's a lot of you with it. The best thing to do if you're anxious, right, is to, is to take action. You know, you can literally, if you're off feeling like anxiety, go for a run. That, that sort of action, that changes your body chemistry and you feel better. But Make sure that every day you've got a game plan, you've got a to-do list that's prioritized and focused on doing positive things. And hopefully you guys will have that at the end of this call, right? I'm gonna give you some things you can do. And again, the toughest thing about the situation is having to take action for you know, twice as much as you probably normally do in your sales and marketing to get little or no return. But uh, you, you've got to push as hard as you can and just keep you know, making every day count. If I said to you what springs to mind when I say the word salesperson, all right, you don't have to type it in. I've asked this question so many times at, at live events that we did um, in the past that we used to do. Um, and the response is always, you know, pushy, telemarketing, um, you know, sleazy, car salesman, all that sort of thing. Now, if, if that's, or those are some of the thoughts, your immediate thoughts you had when I asked the question, you know, what comes to mind with that salesperson, that is a reflection of your belief around sales, okay? And that's your sales mindset. And if you've got that negative mindset around sales and you're trying to do sales yourself, which all of you are, like you've got to do, you've got to sell to bring work in. And obviously this is a big area for you guys right now. Um, and, and we sell every day, whether you like it or not. I mean, you've got to sell your kids on not taking drugs. You know, you've got to, we are always doing sales, but people have this negative perception. The way to flip, flip the script on it is not see yourself as a salesperson. You are not a salesperson, you are a solution provider. All right, again, if you've got a specialty, which I highly recommend you, yeah, you decide on one if you don't, but that's the solution you provide. There are people out there that need your solution and it's your job to establish whether or not they're the right fit for your business. All right, that's your sales process, which results in you professionally helping them to buy from you. You're not selling anything. The reason sales is a bad name is people are trying to sell things to people they don't need. Someone's trying to sell you a fridge, but you don't need a new fridge. It's freaking irritating. But if you've got... If your fridge broke down last night and you opened the, the newspaper and it said, looking, you know, need a new fridge, it's going to jump off the page because it's relevant. Remember, it's all about relevance, all right? So I'm going to share with you a sales process. By the way, guys, I've just refined and developed a new sales process. Some of you may have already heard about it. Working with a builder in Queensland, he's about the franchise and we've got the sales process franchise ready. I'm happy to share that entire system with you guys. So you'll get a, a follow-up email after this. Just let me know. Just say, hey, Kurt, sales process, please. Or just use the word sales process in the header of your email and I'll shoot it across to you. It's absolute gold. Um, all right, include scripts, documents, everything that you need. So the golden rule for sales, guys, what do you think it is? Um, most people tell me it's closing, having a sales strategy. Um, closing is a big thing. But really, here's, let, let me enlighten you. It's qualify, qualify, qualify. Your sales process should do things firstly qualify, which is just establishing if the person's a good fit. If someone's not a good fit for what you do, there's, there's no use taking it any further. And sales is hands down the biggest inefficiency in this industry. And you cannot afford to waste one minute of your time speaking to someone who's not a good fit for what you do. So firstly, you have to have that specialty, know what it is that you do well. That's where you add value. And then when someone comes to you, that's not a good fit. You need to watch. Okay, this is where people struggle. When someone comes to them and they're not a good fit, and you've probably all done this. You probably ended up speaking to someone who wasn't a good fit. You knew they weren't a good fit. You went to site. You knew it straight away within the first two minutes. I'm never going to work with this person. But what did you do? Out of politeness, you kept speaking to them. Because why? You didn't want to damage your brand. You don't want to be rude to people, which is understandable. 
However, if you stack, if you add that up over 12 months, you probably spend three or four weeks speaking to people on the phone and going out to see them that you were never, ever going to work with and you knew it early on. So that's time could be better spent working on your business, building your marketing system, spending with your family, going to the beach. It's a complete and utter waste of time, guys. So what you really need to be doing is politely referring them on. The easiest way to, to move on from someone that's not a fit is say to them, hey, look, we don't do that, but I tell you what, I know someone who's perfect. Yeah, here's the details and uh, tell them the call. You know, if you're getting consistent inquiries for like maybe maintenance work or, you know, small jobs that you don't do, find someone that you, that you know will look after and refer on. If you don't know anyone, just refer them to anyone. Most people are going to speak to a lot of people anyway. So qualifying, it's your process or theirs. This is crucial, right? It's either going to be them following their process. And, and <laughs> let me tell you, everyone, everyone looking for a builder has a process okay their process looks something like this they jump online they, they look at 20 different builders websites they narrow it down to 10 they meet with five they get quotes from three and then they choose the best right that's their process you it's either yours or theirs that wins you need to have a better process than them right and you will know here's how you can tell that they've won the process game and you're following their process it's when they say hey i need you to change this i need you to do this i need you to give me a detailed breakdown and you're going okay okay and, they say, and then they're saying, you know, jump, and you say how high. That's you following their process. And I've seen a guy go through three years and 37 changes to a plan um, and 600 hours, 600 hours. And then at the very end, the guy went nuts. I found someone five grand cheaper. All right. This builder was like, he was destroyed. He was broken. You know, you, you can't allow that to happen. This is why it's so important to have a preliminary agreement uh, process and to charge for quotes because it eliminates a factor straight away. You're not going to have tire kickers dragging you down the price, but you need to have a process. So look at, if this is relevant to you, look at that sales process that I'm going to send through to you and just know that it's best practice. There is no better sales process in this country, if not the world right now. All right. If you just follow it to the letter, it's all been tested. It's 14 years in the making and it's there for you to review. On the audio book, I go through a lot of stuff in more detail. Um, obviously, we've only got limited time here today. The best way to sell, and look, sales, again, dirty word, guys. It's not about selling. It's about you being relevant to a specific group of people, which is why you need to have a niche. And it's kind of, those counts intuitive, right? The, the reality is to be successful in business and in life, you're going to be going against the grain of what the majority of people do, all right? We, we, human beings are, are herd animals. And what most people do does not work. All right? One of the, the other best pieces of advice I, I've got, besides uh, you know, someone saying to me, go to someone yeah, ask who, not how. Go to someone who's already done what you want to do and successfully exclude and follow in their, in their footsteps. Um, the other big piece of advice is, and, and this is true, I'd, I'd even recommend you share this with your kids. Look at what everyone else is doing, all right, in the world. What are the majority of people doing? Do the exact opposite and you'll be a raging success. I have found that to be true and you will too if you, if you check it out. But in sales, education-based sales is the most powerful thing you can do. There's guys in finance. I mean, imagine trying to sell finance People, just getting people to talk about money is a touchy subject. You guys will know if you try and get the budget out of someone, never mind getting someone to hand their money over to you so that you can manage it, right? So the only way that they can build trust and credibility, and that's what this is all about, is to educate, offer education, all right? Show people that you can provide a solution. Again, that's what you're doing. You're a solution provider. Educate them on what's involved in doing a renovation, in building a deck, in doing a custom home, in eco. But eco space is a great niche, by the way. We've got guys doing passive house and any range of, of eco-friendly is very popular. Um, you know, people want to pay less electricity. It's not only the tree huggers that want to buy a Tesla or, or get a house that's got a lot of stars. So you can, this, but there's so much to talk about and the stuff keeps evolving and changing and these new products and you just become the go-to person that, that helps educate them. And this is relevant to every niche, even if it's you're doing multi-unit developments or, um, you know, investment properties, whatever it is, there's lots and lots to talk about and you see it out there. Okay, so in the sales process, which you guys, again, you'll get a copy of. There's six main steps. The first is a questionnaire. So when someone contacts you, instead of spending half an hour on the phone and then at the end of it finding out they're not a good fit, you say to them, in order for me to help you best, I need more information, I'm gonna send you a questionnaire. They get that. The tire kicker gets pissed off. That's great, you celebrate that, right? If anyone gets agitated. A A-grade blue chip client, when they hear that, it's music to their ears. You're demonstrating that you're professional, you're organized, you've sat down, you've gone through a list of questions to ask them so that you can better help them. And that's what, that you've got one shot at a first impression. So it's a great first impression. When that comes back from our testing, you get seven out of 10 of those questionnaires back, you review it. If there's any deal breakers, 
you refer them on. You don't have to phone them. You send them an email. So, hey, thanks for sending this through. I know someone who's perfect. They've done plenty of that type of work in, in your area. And off you go. So you've wasted none of your time. Again, you don't want to waste one minute. If it looks great on paper, you phone them. You spend 40 minutes on the phone. Go through all their questions. You do what's called an audition call to establish if and how you can help them again. Are they a good fit? But you're also qualifying them. You're extracting information about their prelims. Then you book in a site visit about five days out. You send them some information, frequently asked questions, explaining what's involved in your process, what's the difference between a square meteorite and a fixed price contract and provisional sums and PC items, all that sort of thing. Again, that builds credibility, it builds trust. And a better educated client is a better behaved client. So the time you meet with them, guys, this is the deliberate slowdown of process and feeding them information so that when you meet with them, they're better educated, but also feel like they know, like, and trust you. Right? They put you in a different league. You're trying to differentiate. You're trying to be more relevant and, and different to the other guys so they don't look at you and go, oh, well, you'll look the same. That guy's cheaper. And they go with him. Right? So this is how you can, you can defend against the guys that are inevitably going to drop their pants out of a, as a survival me mechanism in this current climate. And I'd highly recommend you have a hard copy brochure that you send out as well with your portfolio of work. Again, if you're in a particular genre, say you do heritage homes or Hampton style, they're going to love it. They're going to be drawn to what's there. And if you get people to fall in love with what you do, you'll know you guys that have won awards and you've got great video content and photos, this percentage of people fall in love with what you've done because they see exactly what it is they want. And then that's it. They're sold. They've already made an emotional decision to work with you. Now, the better you do this, guys, the more you're going to have to say no. No is very hard. I know for most guys, from my experience, to say no, it's counterintuitive. Why would you want to say no to someone, especially someone that wants to give you money? Right? Why would you say no? Again, you want to ideally, and when you, I'm all about optimization. If you optimize your sales and your marketing process, you've got a consistent flow of quality clients and jobs in quality areas that are optimized for good profit and cash flow. And then it's all your process. So you engineer your process so that you are in control, you are being proactive, but in the, at the same time, you are optimizing the value that you deliver to your clients. Because when you do that during the job, that also means that you, um, that, that's marketing. People talk about you positively. And again, there's nowhere to hide in this day and age, right? These reviews online. And, uh, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing for all of us. So you gotta have a process for saying no. The best way to do that is to refer on. And then you want to charge for quotes, right? You don't, you don't go in, if you left here now and go, I can't do that, but let me try it. And you say, hey, I'll charge for quotes. It's not going to work that way, guys. You've got to educate people on what's involved with doing an accurate cost analysis. I didn't call it a cost analysis or a feasibility on their project. And then you sitting down with them and, and again, you've got to pack in the value, doing a consultation with them to make sure that there's accuracy on the numbers. Because the reality is, and this is where you need to be honest, most people, what they get told they're gonna to pay and what they end up paying are two very, very different things, right? And if you can, you can back yourself, I know some of you, maybe you don't do fixed price contracts because you're scared and there's a lot of uh, detail that goes in. Our, my private clients, the guys that have uh, you know, reached a certain level, what they do is they charge for quotes. And then they outsource the estimating to some of the best estimators in the country. That's part of our genius network. We've got some of the best estimators that actually bring value to the builder. Maybe some of you guys have tried using outsourced estimators and they get something wrong and you get stung. You've got to find people in that top 1%. You've got to find the best people that can do that. And then your clients then pay for that. Your prospective clients pay for the cost analysis. And done correctly, they will thank you. Okay, I know they will thank you. Is anyone here that's already doing this successfully? Just give me a yes. Let me just see. Them. I, want, I want to know that I'm speaking to the converted. And I know some of you guys will be hearing this from me going, yeah, but how do we know that it actually works? All right. In this environment, using trade packs, is, is a, is, this is one of the opportunities is, yeah, for someone that wants to build now, it's a buyer's market, right? So for those people that are sitting on their hands, I'd highly recommend, and um, Rebecca, who I think is on the call, wrote a great article uh, titled you know is this the best time to build and and someone else recently changed it to beating the bottleneck which i think is fantastic and it's all around how if you know you, you're concerned about the current environment you sit in your hands which by the way a lot of the guys that i'm working with they had they probably had 60 or 70 percent of their prospective clients who said we just want to wait and see what happens come back on board so there's more and more positivity each week that goes by i'm seeing more and more positivity and this is everywhere up and down the eastern seaboard we've got clients in tasmania or at perth adelaide so there's, a, there's obviously different um, situations, different areas. Tasmania is probably the best place to be in Australia right now. 
Uh, Canberra's looking pretty strong as well. You know, they're not having a lot of... Um, we've got guys in Tassie, you know, nine or ten new home leads the last week. You know, just things are, things are still humming along. But for most, in most areas, if you do decide to build, if you're going to build, it's a buyer's market in that you'll get the pick of the trades, you can get, um, there are certain, I know some suppliers that, you know, pricing is going up, um, which is another incentive to build because the prices are going to be, potentially be bigger delays and price hikes down the track. So if you can get your, your, your job done now, you'll get it done quicker with the best trades at a better price. And potentially there's going to be not only massive price hikes, but massive time delays, like 12, 18 months. You can imagine when everyone rushes in, the system's not going to be able to handle it. The councils, all the preliminaries, the design, the engineering, it's just going to be an absolute shit fight. So looking at the comments here, yes, I uh, love this. We do this. That's from Jackie. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Yulia, good to see you. Yes. Um, Ramez, yes. So these are guys that are charging quotes, guys. Um, Constantinos, yes. Excellent. So good to see there's some, some converted there. So uh, trade packs also includes you setting standards, right? Everything that you do, when it comes to building systems and processes, guys, in your business, it's about raising standards. You've been more professional, you've been more organized. And then with that, you obviously need to raise the standards for your team. And that includes your trade base. So your trade pack could set the values, what you expect from them on site. You want to have, you know, nice detailed uh, work orders. So they know, you know exactly what they do. They know exactly what they're doing for the specific invoice that they're going to send you. And they don't try and you know, charge you more down the track and try and expand on that. And then your payment terms, 30 days. Hopefully some of you got guys on 30 day payment terms. That's a great cash flow strategy. The number one thing for cash flow, by the way, is your payment schedules. You want to have payment schedules that are front end loaded, but legal. All right. And um, it's the number one thing you can do to ensure your money comes in before it goes out. So Ramez is just saying, uh, uh, Brett Tapscott, I've been doing this for ages. Love it. Thanks, mate. Good to see you on the call. Uh, Ramez, we use the design services form that we call charging for quotes. If client walks away from us, they are charging uh, for the work we've done to date and agreed to do it up front. Fantastic. There you go, guys. From the horse's mouth. So this stuff does work. Again, just go through that process and follow it to the letter. So let's look at some of the marketing strategies and things that you can do. Ideally, you should have at least 10 marketing strategies or channels for generating one inquiry. And if you go through what you've already got, you've obviously got a, hopefully you've got a website, a Facebook, Instagram page, how's, site science, banners, youth science, it quickly adds up, but you want to have at least 10, if not more. The number one marketing strategy right now, and always, always is networking, all right? And it may not be the sexiest thing, but it works. It's the number one thing you can do. Every resi job and, all the, and the commercial stuff needs to go through design, architects, um, engineers before it gets built. So by contacting these guys, and when I say contacting, they're not five or 10 or 15, contacting a hundred, you know, you've really got to double your efforts and, and then have a strategy for how you contact them. If you do that, you're going to put yourself in the direct line of work. And that's the best thing that you can do. So right now, there'll be builders, again, going away. There'll be other builders, like your prospective clients, sitting on their hands. All right? So if you contact, you get on the blower and you phone you know, 100 architects, you'll potentially jack some low-hanging fruit, but also set up some relationships for down the track. Now, in terms of your approach, it's really important for you to not just phone them and say, hey, you know, we do some work in your area. We'd like to collaborate and, and potentially get some work from you. You know, when we've got leads, we'll share. And if you could share with us and blah, blah, blah. People don't want to hear that. It's like you having a busy day and you probably had this happen. A trade calls you and goes, oh, have you got some work? You know, and if you've got stress with family and kids and you're late for an appointment and someone calls you looking for work, it doesn't help you. That doesn't improve your day. But if one of your trades called you and said, hey, you know, we get uh, inquiries from people in the area looking to work with builders like you, we would like to you know, have a chat to you, you know, do a, a video call for half an hour. Um, and when we come out of the situation, you can go meet them to find out more about you and your business to establish if you're a good fit for the people that would like to work with you so that we can refer to you with confidence. Would you be open to that? That's the approach. Okay. You at the very least will be curious, which is what happens. I've tried this myself. I found 10 architects in Sydney in, in the Eastern suburbs. I've got nine appointments. It works like an absolute bomb. Now, you're going to have to talk to the architects and designers about charging for quotes. So that often comes up. How do you do that? You may have existing architects and designers that feed you work. And you look at my sales process and go, how am I going to get these guys to agree to get their clients that they refer to me to pay for quotes? Well, here's the thing, right? And this, again, is coming from the trenches. Most architects and designers, how many do you think, how many designs do you think don't go 
get built, don't go through the construction. What percentage? I can tell you now it's a fair percentage. So my recommendation is when you meet with these guys and you explain your transfer quote cost analysis process, you also ask them, tell them, have you ever had a client pay you money and then the job not be able to proceed because when they got the final costings, it was way out. And there's plenty of examples where, you know, the client, the, the architect's client or the designer, Grafty, presses them for a number. Like how much do you think this is going to cost? They say, oh, 700 grand. A QS says a million. The two builders are 1.5 and 2 mil. All right. You guys have all heard these stories. So they've had that happen. How do you think that makes them feel when they've been paid 20, 30, 50 grand? Do they refund the money? No. So your cost analysis, feasibility, whatever you want to call it, process helps eliminate that for the rest of their career. So you're taking all that, imagine the emotional backlash when you've got a relationship with someone that paid you money and they can't even use it. Right? There's plenty of examples like that. So ask them that question and then you'll find, they'll go, we've had a builder in Melbourne, he went to an architect, worked for many, many years, you're sweating bullets about having a conversation about charging for quotes. She said to him, hold on a sec, are you telling me that you're going to pretty much do what a QS does? You're going to give me accuracy and numbers? And he said, yeah, well, it'll be very detailed and we can pretty much guarantee within 95%, you know, provided there's no variations later, we'll be able to get it right in, you know, the fixed price. And she said, does that also mean we'll have better predictions on delivery time? We went, yeah. She hugged him. She hugged him. She said, this is fantastic. She, the guy she had attended, I will point my clients to you. We'll only work with you. And a lot of architects would prefer to have a one build attender process. Why do you think? Because it's time consuming for them to go through three quotes. And you know what this woman said, it's a female architect. She said the biggest downside to getting three quotes from builders was that she had to phone two and tell them they didn't get the job. Okay. She's got a conscience. She's obviously not a psychopath and I heard her feelings have to phone guys, keep phoning two guys and say, you didn't get the job. So she'd prefer to have one builder. All right. So you've got to, obviously you've got to kiss some frogs guys. That's the thing. That's where the mindset comes in. Not everyone's going to agree, but you don't want to work with everyone. Okay. 80% of people are, you know, average you live in a world of mediocrity. You've got to find, the people out there that are going to want to want to work with you. I'm going to rapid fire through some direct response marketing. All right. These are, these are banners. This is cheapest chips. You can do eight, 10 of these for 800 bucks. This is obviously extending ready to extend. A question cannot be not answered. When someone reads it, your brain has to answer it. There's a niche statement call to action. Um, here's a custom home example, thinking of building your custom home, the niche, and then the call to action for a free consultation or for a, Project assessment, like in this example, this guy, by, by the way, put this up a couple of months ago. The day the banner went up, he got a, got a call. And you can put these up on schools, footy clubs, bowling clubs. One of our guys put it up on a Cronulla bowling club, 300 bucks for the year. You know, some will tell you 15 grand, others will say 300 bucks. So again, you've got to make the calls, go out and see people. And there's a renovation, custom home. And there's a really big one. Here's a nice big example. So, um, and then the same process or system of question, niche type and call to action applies to trailers, huge signage. Uh, you can use it with uh, flyers as well. Obviously with flyers, you've got more space, you can put more photos and you can put testimonials and, and that sort of thing is a commercial example. One of my guys over in Perth. And, and then there's a showcase flyer example as well, where you can literally send a, a postcard size uh, flyer pointing to a job saying, Hey, we're building around the corner from you and let them know that you're going to update the project with photos and videos, maybe once a week. People love that. They go to your website, whatever you point them to, to go have a sticky beak of what's happening at the person's house down the road. As you guys know, you do a job on a street, you often get another job on that street. So you want to make it known. Guys also use neighbor letters at the start of a job just to let them know you're not trying to sell. Just go, Hey, we want to make this as convenient for you as possible. This is when we've got trains coming in or whatever it is just out as a courtesy and people love that. Um, and then uh, when they get to your website, you have a document they can download. What are the 12 things you need to know before you renovate? And then you build a database, build a following. That's called client banking. So very powerful. Guys, video is the number one medium in marketing right now. Collaborate with your suppliers. This is an email example. I won't go through the details. Uh, you'll get the recording of this. You can freeze and have a look at it. But you can literally get a um, video company. I know you guys down in Vic. Uh, Bones has their own media arm. A lot of these suppliers are content hungry. They need to create their own videos. And if you say to them, hey, I want to do a video production on this job, would you pay for the video? Then you can have the intellectual property. They go, yes, they put it up on their platform. Some have got 90,000 followers and that's going to help them. It's going to help you. And then you can better support them in the future. You use some video examples. Here's some video examples that the, the builder used just to demonstrate what you can do. You can do it with architects as well. 
In terms of quick jobs uh, in now, this is an example of a guy that threw something out for DEX. You want, you want some DEX done, quick turnaround, good margin, good cash flow. He said, I can do two, I've got four weeks. He threw in a free heater, he ended up getting three jobs from this. Julian, I know we're getting close to time, so I'm gonna hand over to you in a, in a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna rapid fire through these last few slides. So really guys, you wanna integrate your online and offline marketing. So your brochures, flyers, banners, obviously point to your website. Make sure you have that up, you signage, everything else. Using educational content. Remember, sales is all about um, education and having a better educated client is a, is a better behaved client. One of our guys created a, a finance article because he had people thinking because they had two mil equity in their home, they get financed. He went all the way through the process right to the end, only to find out they couldn't. So he created an article on that, just to explain that to people and help uh, and basically help them. Here's an article that was on Choice. Choice is like a consumer watchdog. They got massive following on social media. The article about a couple in Sydney that paid 28 grand for architects fees, you know, architects fees only to have to swipe, wipe the slate clean and start again with a with a drafting. So find articles because you have to write your own. You can find other people's articles and share it, especially if it comes from a credi credible source. If it's a very third party credible source, getting yourself in magazines is great to build credibility and authority. Here's an example one of our guys in Brisbane. Ask the expert, puts him in a whole different league. Guys, if you can get on TV, you want to do that. But whatever you do, make sure that you test and measure. If you're using any marketing people out there, you've got to specialize. And, and use a specialist marketing strategist that can tell you and show you, can demonstrate results, test and measure with their, the, the other marketing that they've done with other builders similar to you. That's what you want to do. And that's what we do with the, the marketing strategist that we use is someone that understands the niche, that really need to understand the niche and how it all works. Guys, you should be looking at your profit centers as well. How, what are you doing to make more money? What are you doing to increase your profitability? You should always have five different ways. Improved efficiency, getting trade suppliers to sharpen their pencil, increasing your pricing, building more value so that you can increase your pricing. Um, just quickly, quick question. Does anyone use QE Reader, uh, QR Reader? Um, Julia, most of the phones have a built-in QR. Okay, QR codes. Okay. Guys, get the best help you can from specialists, right? Get specialist help, people with runs on the board. Uh, success leaves clues, okay? Go to the people that can then help you do that. And the best thing you can do, like I said at the beginning of the call, is stay busy. If you're feeling anxious, a lot of us are and you have, you know, some days are better than others. Have a game plan. Have a game plan for every day, every week, and for at least the next 90 days to see you through this period. And make sure it's an aggressive plan and there's nothing better than a deadline. All right. As Duke Ellington famously said, I don't need more time. What I need is a deadline. So give yourself a deadline. The question is, who's holding you accountable? With our coaching program, there's accountability. We have calls every two weeks. There's specific action items, and it needs to be done. So you've got that accountability there. But most importantly, guys, the ultimate test is not the beauty of your plan or your mission statement. It's all about the action you take. All right. So there's a lot of people that are not necessarily the most intelligent. They don't have the best systems or processes, but they take the most action. All right, and they get results. So I cannot recommend that enough. I'm going to hand over to Julia now. I just want to thank you and also Build Exact as well, again, for hosting this. So thank you, Julian and Marina. And um, if you've got any questions, guys, we will have Q&A coming up shortly. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. It was, uh, it was great to listen to. Um, Kurt's got some great knowledge of the... Uh, building instruction space. Um, I see a few people um, saying, asking about, is, is it gonna be recorded? So yes, it is. We will give you that as well. So um, you can go back in and listen to your own time, take some notes and sort of really make a, a plan in terms of how you wanna change your business. Um, I'm just gonna quickly share my screen. So I think Kirby just, uh, yeah, there we go. And then I'll just bring mine up now. It should be, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see that right now. Um, so I'm really going to be talking about, um, we're going to really dial in specifically in terms of how software can help and obviously BuildExact can, can help you win more work. Um, so from a software perspective, a lot of people are moving into software now um, and you know, moving away from the manual way of doing things. But the building instruction industry for such a long time, it was really focused about manual work and sitting and doing things manually. And really over the last um, few years, you've seen this massive change in terms of how people want to work. And um, that's for a ton of different reasons, and um, time is probably the, the biggest one. So I'll just uh, show you some of the areas we've got here. So 
I'm going to focus on three key areas. So that's speed, accuracy, and professionalism. So speed, it's all about how quick you're getting your quotes out to clients um, and making sure you're not spending a heap of time doing that admin work. Um, you speak to builders all the time and they're literally spending, you know, 20 hours to do that. And that could be over a period of, you know, a week, two weeks to get that quote back to the client. And as Kurt mentioned um, a few times, if, if you're a client and you're looking for someone to looking for a builder, you're probably speaking to maybe one or two others at least as well. So you're always in competition with people. So you want to try and get that quote back as quick as possible. Obviously, if that quote's taking you 20 hours to do that, you're already at a disadvantage. Um, you know, if you're working all day and you're coming back home and doing that at night, um, you know, not a great position to be in. Um, accuracy, so the accuracy of your quote, doing things manually, there's always room for, for human error, especially doing it at 9 p.m. at night when you want to be relaxing. Um, and it goes a lot more deeper into that as well as the quality of it. So if your quote's accurate, you'll be able to see if that client is, um, you know, is worth you working with. Um, as Kurt mentioned a few times there, don't just work with every single person out there. You want to work with the people that are going to be best for your business and that's going to deliver a quote. If someone's pushing that price too far down and you've done the quote and you've managed everything based on how you work and you've taken previous, um, previous figures of your previous jobs and you look at it and go, that's not a good job for me. Don't do it. But a software can really help you um, and, tell, and tell you that information. Um, and then from a professionalism point of view, most people in the space aren't professionals in terms of drawing up a quote. Most of you guys are professional builders um, or you've come from some sort of trade background. So that's where your expertise lies. Most people don't have that straight off the bat. So people do learn it. People do pick it up. But um, often, you know, more often than not, we do find that people don't do that amazingly well um, on the first time. And the way they communicate with clients as well, running around on your phone, trying to shoot off emails at the end of the day, just all those kind of things there. So I'm going to go through a few areas of how BuildExact can help that. So I'm just going to quickly um, share my build exact screen with you now. So hopefully you guys can all see that. So from a software perspective, build exact completely browser based, no installation. So all that stuff about, you know, computer eventually might crash one day and all that. Don't need to worry about it. You can access this on your phone, tablet, PC, Mac, whatever. Perfectly fine. Um, so I'm going to jump into just a few key areas. I'm not going to go through a whole demo of this, um, but we're going to go through speed. Uh, first of all, so from an estimate point of view, if I've got an estimate here and it's something I've opened up, um, BuildExact uses templates. So what we say to people when you first sign up, start creating a basic template over a period of a few different jobs and different estimates, you slowly adjust that template so that every single time you go in, it's quicker and quicker and quicker for you. Eventually getting to a point where you've got it you know, completely down pat that as soon as you're ready to go, you can, you can hop in. So I've already loaded my plans and everything in here. I've got my costing categories. These are already laid out for me based on that template. And I can already, as you can see here, I can already go in and put what markup I want on each category. Um, we work with a few different um, partners that bring price lists in um, to the system, but you can also um, just upload your own from suppliers. So fairly simple. I've got a brick supply and install recipe, which I've built. Now, if I open this up, that's a Whit Sunday brick that comes from Austral Bricks. And I've just worked out roughly what that labor um, and the other materials are going to cost me um, per square meter. Now, the importance of this, it's not just one rate fits all for everyone. You have to sort of understand you know, how you work. And, and the way you do that is obviously looking at previous jobs and keeping that data and building that does allow you to do this. Um, and then actually you know, fine tune that you know, more and more as you go along. So I've got that recipe there. I'll just do a quick takeoff of that brickwork. Uh, I'll go in that takeoff tool. I'll just hop into the elevation plan. I'll just change the color to red so you guys can see it a little bit clearer. And I'll just zoom in. And I'm just gonna go point to point on this outside here. I'll just do it really quickly so you can see how it works. So what we've got there is 33.76 square meters. We're gonna take out the windows now. So we'll draw a deduction. And there we go. And you'll see that top right hand corner, that's actually reducing that amount that we're quoting on. Now you can imagine doing this manually how long that takes and that will impact the time it takes you to get back to a client the speed of it the accuracy as well a computer in terms of measuring pixels is always going to be more accurate um, than using a ruler and a pencil um, and obviously computers you know if it's an online program it stays there it's ready to go rather than having to use an excel sheet that could potentially crash at any point in time so once we've got the data there we can actually you know push this into a schedule and you know add it to prime cost or original sum we can do all that and add markup so that's kind of just really showing you how you can do a really quick um, and simple takeoff. Um, I've got one here for framing. I'll just quickly show you as well, just in case some people are wanting to see 
um, how that works. So I'm just going to go into a recipe, browse the ones that I've created already. And I, I don't come from a building background at all. Um, so if I can do this, this will be no problem at all for you guys. So really simple framing recipe there. We'll just hit close. And the way the framing works, now I'm doing this as little me, this is because I've already got the, um, the height put into it. It's literally just drawing around the outside. Now just so much quicker than doing that manually. Um, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you get the idea of how that, how that side of things works. So that's from a speed perspective, guys, in terms of how we can get those quotes out quicker to a client. Really, really super important. The quicker you get a quote out of the client, the, the better it is, obviously, if it's, if it's accurate, um, especially if they're speaking to other builders. Um, from a quality um, perspective, you want to make sure that those data is accurate and getting that out in a, in a timely manner to that client. So when I go into my quote here, if I just save this here now, I can go into here and print this off. Now we can go into view. So there we go. So I've got a quote. I've just thrown this up really quickly based on a template I've already got. So you can put your logos in there, any text that you want. So it's all going to be really determined on how you work and the templates that you decide to, to create. We can see quickly the specifications with any images that we've got. Um, and then at the very bottom, we'll eventually get down to all the costings that we've got and then the total. So really, really simple. It's good quality quote. Um, and obviously, when you actually start doing this job, you'll be able to go back in and look at how this quote is actually performed. Um, now, from a professionalism point of view, um, is it a bit of an area where a lot of builders do fall down and how they, how they manage that side? Again, as I said, most people come from a really trade-focused background and then they learn this, the, you know, things like Word and things like that and how to, how to create structured emails and marketing. All that kind of stuff is things that people try and pick up after. And as Kurt mentioned, some people still haven't got there with that. Um, so we do help with that side of things. So we have a lead management system. So if you get a client call up, how are you currently managing that? Are you just writing it down on a notepad and then you might give them a call in a few weeks or how are you, how are you managing that process? So we do actually allow you to create a lead in here um, and I can change at any point in time where I'm up to um, with this particular lead. Now that's really good because at any point in time I can go in, I can see what their budget is, I can see um, who the client is, any notes. And then as we move through, as you can see here, we've got any estimates or any communications. So if the client emails me, or communicates in any way, shape, or form, it's gonna come back into Build Exact. Keeps all your information in one space. Um, I know for me, just some day to day when I'm working and I've got, a, I'll get an email from a, from a partner that I work with, and I'll be searching through emails and things like that. It becomes very messy. Um, and I can only imagine how, how it is when you're, when you're trying to manage a build and potential lead. And once you've got the lead created in there, you can actually go and create a customer portal. So Build Exact does have this. You can actually color code it. So this does come into the professionalism side, as I mentioned earlier on. How that looks and feels to a client is really important. So you can have a couple of images there and how you've, uh, on, on some jobs that you've previously done. It just fills people with a lot of confidence. Now, if I'm gonna spend, you know, 200, 300 grand, whatever that is, the more of this sort of stuff that pe people can give me, the, the better I feel. Um, one of the key problems that we, we see that um, small builders have versus larger builders, larger builders tend to have a lot more of these systems in place. They might be using custom built software that costs a heap of money. They've got people in the back office that are there with you know, shooting off emails and things. Smaller builders, generally the one-to-one, the -one, more personal feel is better, but some of this stuff is, is where they lack. So we bring that to you, we, we enable you to do that. So um, I just drew up this logo yesterday, so a bit of gray and a bit of red in there, so you can see I've managed that with, the, with how this looks. And then how I communicate with my clients. Any messages I send through, through Build Exact is all gonna come into here. So at any point in time, they can go in and look at all of these. So I've got a quote uh, letter in here. If I click on that, that will load up in here. So it keeps that professionalism um, you know, really high. Um, and it, it enables you to keep that conversation going with that client in an easy way. And it helps you manage it because you don't wanna be sitting there at nine o'clock at night trying to send all this information out and get this stuff um, out to the client. Um, it's really, really important, especially when people are, um, you know, parting with a, with a huge heap of money. And um, one thing I think I thought, uh, I think Kurt may have mentioned it earlier on as well about the setting the expectation with the client. Um, I actually spoke to one of my friends yesterday. She's just going through um, her second new build. She sold a house and she's going through a second one right now. Um, she's actually moving just down the road from me. Um, her first builder that she used, um, they said it's going to take a week to get the quote. This is about six years ago now. To take a week to get the quote end up taking two weeks to get the quote to her. 
Um, she was still really happy with them because it came from a referral from someone else, but the builder ended up discounting the job by $500 because of that delay. Um, now that was obviously just because they just maybe took on too much or they were too busy to get it done, probably weren't using a system that enabled them to do it very easily. Um, it's a small husband and wife team, but um, using things like a, a system that you can punch these quotes out quickly at a really high quality and keep it personal, so keeping your, your level of service uh, constant, it's really important. You don't have to do things like discounting jobs or you know, or running around at the end of the night trying to trying to get this out to a client. So always, if you are going to do anything, um, never over promise and under deliver. Do it the other way around. Um, keeps that um, you know that positive feeling from a, from a client's perspective. So that's a really brief look at um, builders. That guys. So as I mentioned, whole idea there. Quick takeoffs. Get your quotes out quickly and professional to a client. Use things like customer portal where the client can hop in and see and see daily updates. If you do that sort of thing, you won't have the client constantly ringing you and, and, and asking you um, what's going on with the job because you can, you can do that daily update with them. Um, so that's kind of really some of the things that I was, I was sort of focused on. And I do from time to time do demos with builders as well. And, you know, often the takeoff side, when people see that, that's what really kind of um, hits people because it's a manual process. But all the other things, all the other components that come with it, and able to join up a quote really easily and keeping it really professional and a good quality quote, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm terrible with words um, and trying to draw that up and you can so much room for errors in there as well. So systems are, are a lot better than doing things manually there. So that's kind of it from me in terms of what I wanted to show you in terms of how Build Exact works. Um, I think we're going to throw back um, for some questions now. Um, so if you do have any questions for myself or for Kurt, um, I can see Kurt's hopping back on there as well. Please um, let us know. You can either type, I mean, ideally type in the question section, but if you do want to type them into the, the chat, it's, it's not a problem. It's just a bit harder for us to, to see them there. So I'll quickly just stop sharing my screen now. There we go. And you should be able to hear Kurt now as well. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the chat box. There are plenty of guys saying thank you. Thank you guys for turning up. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and Justin Worthington is asking, can you import leads from an Excel database? I don't think you can at the moment, um, but I will get back to you on that one, if that's okay. It's a fairly quick process to import the leads, though. It takes about 30 seconds, 30 seconds to enter them in manually. Yep. I'm not sure if we've got any more. And he's asking about purchase orders. Can you generate purchase orders? Yeah, yeah. So um, in the next webinar, I'm going to focus more about the once you've with once you've won the work and how to how to do things after that. So this one's really talking about getting that um, getting the jobs in there at the start. So you can run purchase orders. It does sync into all the accounting softwares as as um, as Kerr mentioned earlier. So NYB, QuickBooks, and Zero, um, and it does the whole thing. So it does schedules, it does invoicing, purchase orders. Um, you can you know communicate with your subbies and suppliers and everything through there. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a fully um, end to end system. Oh, I see Jamie, I've just signed up Build Exact last week. Um, glad, glad that you're loving it. Hopefully you've had your training by now as well. Really good way to get set up. And um, if you hop into the videos on the website, um, I still haven't had training on Build Exact. That's not a, not a lie at all. I, I started, I watched the videos, I figured it out myself, I played with it. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily need the training. It's good to have it, um, but it's just a testament to the software in terms of how quick and easy it is to get up and running with it. Um, Joe asked about um, recording the webinar. I think I might have mentioned that earlier on, but it is being recorded. Um, Kurt, Joe is also asking about the, um, the bookkeeping company that you use. Maybe you can reach out to him and pass the details on. Yeah, sorry, what was that? The, which company? Um, yeah, Joe was asking about the specific um, bookkeeping company that you use. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, Joe, if you could um, just flick me an email, uh, info at builders coach builder with an s coach coach.com.au and i'll shoot across the guys details and anyone else as well we're going to send out an email the recording to the attendees yeah so yeah we're going to have it on our web and our, on our um on our youtube page as well so um it'll be on that as well um Rob, uh, there regarding the recipe templates. Yes, yeah, so Build Exact does provide a ton of recipes um, in there already. So I think there's about 100 in there. Um, so all you have to do is go back in and, um, and just fine tune them based on how, on how you work. So yeah, we definitely do that. Uh, just seeing if there's any more in there. Daniel Trent saying hi, hey mate. 
You got a question there? Just type it in. I'm uh, just uh, for everyone's. Uh... Oh, here we go. Good. Scott Bell, communicate with clients in Build Exact. Do you use email such as Outlook and it transfers across, or do you message direct in Build Exact? What was that one? Sorry, mate. Uh, Scott Bell's got a question about email. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's on the. Sorry, I'm looking at two different. I'm looking at the QA and the, um, and the chat. Um, so, yeah, so the way Build Exact. So, if you communicate directly through the customer portal, it'll actually post those messages straight into the portal. Um, if you just have your email sync turned on, yeah, so basically the way it works, if you email a client and you've got those details in there, um, when that client emails you back, it will push it over to, um, to Build Exact. So it still uses your normal email, um, but it just keeps that communication coming in. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'll, guys, I was only looking at the chat box. I'll see this stuff in the q and I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, Daniel Trent asking, do you think it's worth taking video footage before a reno? Um, like a before and after sort of thing. If look, if if you can educate people, you want to keep the information relevant. Um, the good the good news is with any um, educational content, if you guys in resi building, it's it's so easy because it's the number one obsession on the planet, not only in this country. You know, property, real estate, flipping houses, investment properties. So, so just talk about what you do. That's why it's so important to niche and then just go an, an inch wide, a mile deep. And you'll see, I was in America last year, 42, they had a list of the 42 top reality TV shows and they said they cannot, they cannot create enough content. Um, so we've got quite a few coming through. I don't know if you've got another one you want to respond to, Julian, while I go through. Yeah, um, so I think Gary said how accurate are the recipes in Build Exact. Um, I, think they're, I think they're about two years old from a, from a pricing point of view, so I would really recommend using your own prices. But um, all you'd have to do is go into Build Exact, copy the recipe that you've got, Go in and change them to put your own prices in there and save them yourself. So it's really easy to do. Um, and you, you don't just to go in and do them all at once either. So as you go through a quote, save them and then the next time they're there. So don't don't necessarily go in and you know do 50 recipes and things like that at the very beginning. Save them as you go along because it's the same process of entering it in and, and saving it as, as just editing them. So I've got one here from Robert Bray asking, hey, um, Kurt, is there, are there packages we can buy in regards to process and actually what to charge for tendering? So I'll, I'll send that to you, Robert. That's the sales process I spoke about. I've got a franchise ready sales system with all the scripts, the documents, the prelim agreements, everything in there. In terms of what you charge for quotes, the, any estimator should, and they normally do normally charge 0.25%. So a million dollar uh, job is, is about a grand and then I'd recommend you charge maybe 1500 bucks, but you could just pass that fee on because uh, once someone pays you money, it's at least a one in two conversion. So it's not so important how much they pay you and, and whatever they pay you, you're never going to make money on that prelim process. Having a preliminary uh, solution, a process for preliminary solution or charge for quote is, um, it's just ensuring that they give you commitment. The best uh, commitment someone can show you is to pay you some money. And once they do, like I said, they're one in two. So your whole sale process is engineered towards converting on a prelim as opposed to trying to sell a half a million dollar project or two million dollar project. So it makes it a whole lot easier. But 0.25% is the cost to, to normally to get quotes done. Use that as a benchmark. Uh, there's Sam just got a question about Build Exact. I'm not sure if you're uh, ready. Yeah, uh, but so. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So um, if. It, if anyone can't see that, um, Sam was basically asking, do build, does Build Exact record a date when those price lists were, um, were added in? Yeah, it does. So in terms of um, if the price has changed, you can go back in and um, change them individually, or you can do a percentage increase, or you can just add, add a whole new one um, prices in. So it's really up to you in terms of how you manage that. And um, there was just one here as well from, I think it's Ken. Um, um, so if you're emailing trades and suppliers, does Build Exact keep them in a client file out of view of the client? Um, so you actually can set up all your, what we call um, contacts. So they're different to clients. Contacts are suppliers, employees, um, subbies. So that will do the thing for those guys as well. So it does keep it separate. Ramez, and, um, so I've got one, yeah, I'll just uh, quick answer. Yeah. It's, we've got, so we've got some Kiwis on the call. <laughs> do, and asking if I work with uh, builders in New Zealand. Yes, not many, but I, I do and I have. Um, both the North and the South Island, so happy to have a chat. If anyone wants to find out more about what I do, obviously you probably gather, I don't do this for the money, I do it because I really like helping people. 
Um, if you've done anything yourself, a lot of my clients do get involved in charity work and that sort of thing. When you're helping people, it's, you get a real buzz. So I got a real buzz at helping people go through transformation. Happy to book in a, a, a 30 minute Skype Zoom call to find out more about you and your business and if and how it can help. So just, just let me know if, if you want to do that. Robert saying thank you. Uh, you're welcome, mate. Again, I, I love it, man. I don't um, I really enjoy helping. No, no one's teaching these guys how to put these things in place. So I've got some great information to share. Marty's saying, could you send to Marty? Yeah, we'll send it um, definitely, Marty. No problem, mate. We'll get that over to you. Gary Klinger, the people charging for quotes, is it based on a percentage of a quote or time spent? Can I ask what they may charge? Yeah, it's 0.25%. So whatever the, the scope of works is, contract value, 0.25% is what an estimator would charge if you outsource. If you do it yourself, just look at that as the cost and then put on a little bit for yourself if you want to. Uh, there, Rebecca said she they charge $1,650. Um, Ramez, we charge $1,500 plus GST. And um, it's only payable if they walk away, if they sign an agreement and go with us, then we put the charge into what's costed. Yes, a lot of guys do offset whatever they charge for prelim. Sometimes a prelim and a, and a quote in the contract, if people proceed, you don't have to do that. There's plenty of value in that already. Think of the time that you put into pricing a job. Uh, Anthea saying, Gary, we charge a fixed fee, one fee for designer construct and another for owner plans. There you go. Again, you um, it up now. Okay, I've got two more here on the Q&A side. So um, first from Sergey, um, or Sergey, sorry. Um, software, does it suit handyman businesses? Probably not for handyman. Um, it's more of a, I mean, really anything that you've got a plan for, that's where we generally start. So it suits the slightly bigger jobs um, just because of the way the, the system works. Um, yeah, generally the slightly bigger jobs. So anything from really from a reno or a, or a new build. Some trades will be a good fit as well. Um, I've also got from Peter here on the Q&A section. Um, so been dealing with a client for a long time and they are relentless with questions but no commitment. How do you, any strategy to get them to make a decision? Um, so, sorry, what was that? Clients not wanting to proceed? Well, I think they're, yeah, so he's got, uh, Peter's had a client for a little while um, and they've just constantly at him with questions, but they won't commit to a, to a, to the job. Um, yeah, have you got a strategy to, to help I'll, them? I'll do, decision? guys. So, there's, um, so obviously, the beating the bottleneck. So, people that want to wait and don't want to proceed, they need to make an informed decision. So, you got to say then, hey, like there is um, going to be, at some point when we come out of this mad rush, regardless of where you are, and there's potentially going to be plenty of price hikes and time delays. So just really so you're aware. And also, if you do proceed now, you're going to get a pick of the trades. Here in Australia, I don't know about New Zealand, they extend the trading hours. So guys, I've got work happening at my house, landscape and pool, and they work in weekends. You know? So really, it's a buyer's market for someone that wants to proceed. So I would use that. And if they go, uh, they, they still sit in on the fence after that conversation about being the bottleneck, guys, use the real estate agent's clothes. <laughs> all right? So that is, like, if you want to buy a property, what do real estate agents do? They say to you, they phone you up and say, hey, we've got another buyer. Um, and if, if, you know, if you want the property, you'll go, you'll go to them, whoa, 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 wait, we'll put an offer in. Otherwise, you'll say, no, give it to them. So that, that's how you can find out. That's a last resort, that real estate agent's close, where you say, look, um, what, what you say is, you obviously can't say we've got another buyer and I'm selling a property, but you say, we've got our team lined up for you and your job. We've got someone else that's come in so we can you know, give it to them. We can give that spot to them um, if you don't want to proceed, but we've come to you out of respect because we, you know, obviously you, uh, you, we've got you booked in, in the pipeline. And if they go, no, nah, leave it, then yeah, you know, they're not that interested. Um, got a couple of questions here um, from a builder's perspective. So Ben, regarding um, how recipes work and tracking your costs. So later on down, the, uh, so next, next week, I'll be showing you a little bit more about the job side of, of Build Exact. So, um, you can basically track the cost versus your initial estimate line by line. So you can see right down to the each line exactly where you're going over and under based on your estimate. So you might be running perfectly fine on say brickwork or framing, I think you've mentioned there overall, but you might be going over in a particular area. So you might be under quoting the labor component of it. And if you don't, if you're not able to see that information line by line, you're never going to know you're going to continue pricing jobs and you continue to be overpaying on the labor. And then maybe one day you're gonna um, you're gonna underquote on the, the material side, and that's gonna put your job um, put your job down a bit. Um, someone from um, from our company actually said that he said this to a client as well. How are you gonna project manage yourself out of a bad estimate? So once you know your data inside the job, it's gonna make you estimate more correctly. Um, 
Just a quick one for Joe. Um, yes, that is my correct email address, info at builderscoach.com.au. And then just one more thing to add to Peter's question about how to get someone to commit. I've had guys working on big projects like $2 million plus for the builders that do $5 million cost builds. Uh, I've had someone quite on a $30 million project um, over in Perth. But the, um, the way to get someone to commit, if, if they, I mean, an RN, besides the real estate agents close, is you can create um, a meeting. We had guys create a, a thing called a build process explanation session. I just phoned the phone up and said, hey, we, we're calling to book in your build process explanation session. They created an agenda. Uh, they needed to find out about whether these guys were going to commit and also if they had the money. And the, first, the client said, what's that about? I said, oh, it's just part of our process. It's what we do, pre-construction. So they booked that in. They spent about two hours with them. They were able to extract the information they needed and they got a commitment. So you can create a reason. Because if you keep phoning them, eventually after seven or eight calls, you feel like you're chasing them and it gets a bit awkward. So you want to create a scenario. But then ultimately, you need to get a yes or no as quickly as possible, guys. Um, there's a couple of other things. Yeah, Nick, you've got down here about um, if you never use a software estimating program, is it hard to learn? I've never used a software estimating program before. I'm not a builder. I did landscaping for a few months when I first came to Australia. Probably here, yeah, I'm not from from Australia naturally, and uh, it sounds a bit either as Kurt. Um, I can use it. Um, I didn't need full training on it. It is very, very easy to do. Um, it's all digital, and it's all, once you set your templates up, it's, it's perfectly um, fine. As I mentioned before, we do give you free training, so that's three hours. It's a two-hour block, and then a one-hour follow-up block after that. Most people don't need the, the full three hours. Recommendation is get the two hours, watch some of the videos, give it a test, and if you want to come back for that, that hour at a later time, just sort of fine-tune it, then you can. It's perfectly fine. Sam just saying that, uh, just sharing what they charge for quotes, 1500, three grand, 1300, depending on the complexity of the, how complicated the job is. Um, and then we've got here, so Ken, um, okay, same prices are going up. He's told that quite a few appliance brands are going up tomorrow, in fact. And then Robert, just uh, still unsure how to charge for a quote, please explain. So the, the reality is guys, and this is, comes back to education-based marketing, um, uh, and also using a credible third party so realestate.com they get 5,000 views um, a month I know they're launching in the states they're probably the very credible site in terms of real estate and 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 also they've got articles and building everything else but there's an article on there that talks about and these other articles as well that relate to this it's about 80 percent of free quotes not being worth the paper they've written on okay 80 percent so you've got to educate your clients again if someone's going to decide to get free quotes they need to understand 80 percent they might as well get a blank sheet of paper right um, most people aren't aware of that. They just assume all quotes are accurate. They're not. So you need to plant the seed. They do their due diligence. I find out that that is true. So then, then what you say, Robert, is what we do, we've got a process to ensure accuracy of the numbers. The last thing we want is for you to find out, you know, to, to get a quote for 700 grand. Then during the build, you find out it's 1.5 and you can't afford it. And that does happen a lot. So you, you, can't, you need to educate them that you've got a process to ensure they don't become a statistic and you're trying to help them. You're not trying to extract money because whatever they remember, whatever they pay you for a quote, the 1500, the three grand, that is nothing. You still, it's still a lot, what's called a loss leader. You could not have a business where you charge for quotes. You would not make money. You'd go under. You, you think if you factor your time in, it's not worth the money. So you, all you're doing is charging them a nominal fee, lunch money, really, to get accuracy in the numbers to help them. So you've got to take the time and effort to help them understand that. But you can use, very important to use credible third party. So they can see you're not trying to manipulate them. You, you are genuinely trying to help them. And you can say to them, if you were a family member, you were my mother, brother, sister, best friend, I'll be doing this because I'll care about you. And, it, and people can see if you genuinely care or if you put a BS. Yeah, can I just to add to that um, from the charging for a quote side, if you are using a software like BuildExact, you know, we, it's not, it, we don't charge... Um, lock-in contracts or anything like that there's no upfront fees so if you are charging for a quote you'll be constantly paying off your building that subscription um in one month for one quote just no the, locking contracts no big desktop nothing like that sorry man yeah um we've got a lot of builders by the way using build exact for quoting very happy with it i'm product agnostic so i don't i'm not here to i don't support i, I keep myself uh, very neutral um i don't want any conflicts of interest but um we do have guys using it to great effect Uh, do you have a source for 80% of free quotes not being? Yes, I do have a source of article. I can send you that article, guys, from realestate.com if you want it. Again, just info at builderscoach.com.au. And then I'd encourage you to find other articles as well. Um, get on in your office even to build up a folder of articles that relate to that sort of thing. But once people look out there, 
there's endless examples of people. They, they ask friends and family. I go to our son's cricket. The number of parents that I've spoken to that say never, ever again am I going to do any form of building ever till the day I die. All right, you'll you'll see that the, the the thing that benefits you guys that are on this call and want to be proactive with these processes is the the building industry's reputation is really bad. There's no trust. There's like lawyers, real estate agents, and you guys. All right, so. Someone said the other day, excuse my, my French, but you just need to be better than shit to be really good in this industry. You don't have to do much. But if you aim for, you know, best practice, guys, you get into a blue ocean. You can be so different and so good that it's negotiated tenant. So now the builders, one builder tenant process and life's a beautiful thing. You know, and there's good examples of that out there. Yeah. Um, Jamie's just uh, popped in here as well on the Q&A section. Um, so a client contacted uh, for the first time, do I put them straight into leads um, now? Um, yeah, I mean, guys, if you're, not, if you're not managing your leads currently, you have to manage that. Whether that's using BuildExact or not, you have to be managing them correctly. If you, as soon as you get a lead through, pop it into a system, or even if you're, if you're still on some sort of Excel sheet, pop it into somewhere that you can record that data. You don't really want to be ever in a situation where you're just randomly picking up the phone and giving your leads a call. Have a system in place that you can manage that. And that's that's feasible for you to do. So have a what, what's the first thing you get? You get a phone call. Someone's interested. If you haven't called you back, how long do you wait? Have that system in place straight away. Emails, templates that you can send out ready to go. So you're not doing it off the cuff. Um, so Sandra here. If we start using Builders Act and change our minds, do we retain access to those quotes we have done till the job is done or into the future? Um, so it is a month to month subscription. So as long as you're subscribing, you do have access to it. Um, look, if you do need access and you, you do stop paying a subscription and you need to hop back in there for, you know, 20 minutes to take a take a quote out of there, we're not going to stand in your way for that kind of thing. But you'd have to get, get in touch with us um, directly to do that. But for some people, they just subscribe um, when they're busy and then they'll um, dial back to just an estimation package and not the jobs when they've quietened down. So you can do all of that stuff as well. Um, I think we're starting to slow down a little bit with the questions. We've gone quite, gotten quite a lot of questions actually, which is kind of nice to see. Fantastic, yeah, guys. Thanks for your participation. I love it. Um, Thanks, our people are. Seems like it's starting to slow down. Yeah, guys. If, you, if anything pops up, you know, ten minutes from now, half an hour, you go, oh, I really want to ask something. Just uh, shoot us an email. I can contact. Um, Contact me direct on info at builderscoach.com.au and Julian, I think yeah. I'm going to have your details as well. Anyway. Yeah, I have all the details. My, my email though is juliank at buildexact.com. Um, Daniel just popped in um, there, how much is building? That really depends on the individual. So most people will either pay 149 or 249 if he's going for the monthly subscription. If you go annual, you do get a discount on top of that as well, um, but no upfront costs and no cost for the training. Yeah, it's making sure we haven't missed anyone yet. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now as well. <laughs> Going back up to the top. Um, Great to see so many of you guys still on the still on the um, in the webinar, and um, even though we've run 15 minutes over. Yeah, Rebecca's saying uh, she's saying, "Hey guys, some some good things to share with your prospects." In Victoria, the big government has just extended the twenty thousand dollars first homeowners grant. So find out about these things. Obviously, take full advantage of any of the government incentives if you haven't already. Um, I know the big government's also looking to fast track jobs in the pipeline, especially at the upper end of town, but they're very motivated. We've got builders that have contacted their local uh, members and um, even and they've had guys con phone them back to say they are keen to fast track. Obviously, the government wants to get keep money flowing. And one of the ways to do that is to get projects happening because everyone gets paid. So if you've got a lot in the pipeline in prelims, you can get it moving. Um, Ramez or Ramiz, um, can clients post directly out of the client portal to Facebook? Not at the moment, that might come um, in the future. We're just sort of at the first iteration of that at the moment. But maybe, yeah, maybe in the future um, of sharing the photos. Uh, yes, yeah, so not at the moment, but yeah, hopefully in the future will something we look at. <laughs> Scott about the black shirts. Um, that's a standard now with a, uh, with uh, um, a, <laughs> something like when I used to work at NYOB and we always used to wear black shirts as well. Um, yeah, it seems that way. It's the modern way rather than a, in a full suit now. It's a, makes us stay relevant and, and casual at the same, at the same time. So yeah, you can just about see the building exact logo I've got there, but 
Um, yeah, black shirts are, are, the, are the go now for most businesses. Man, it was a pure coincidence for me. I didn't know how to get into it at all. It happened. I think it uh, looks like that's a wrap, Julian. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks again to you, Julian, and Build Exact. Um, yeah, thanks, Kurt. It was, uh, this is fantastic. I don't think I've ever um, been on a webinar with this much participation. So it's, it's uh, fantastic. Totally blown away and really looking forward to next week as well. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kurt. I really appreciate it. Heap of, heap of knowledge there that, um, you know, that's really useful for people in this space. Um, yeah, guys, if you didn't hear, next week, um, Friday, hop on that one. Um, we're going through a bit more on Build Exact. And obviously, Kurt's got a heap more knowledge that he would like to share with you as well. So, yeah, really appreciate you joining and thank you so much for everyone staying um, on for the next 15 minutes or so. Um, I hope to see you guys next week. Cheers, guys. Take care. Thank you guys.